With the continued market focus on the Federal Reserve's fight against inflation and recent comments by Fed Chair Jerome Powell that indicate that the central bank is not done hiking its benchmark rate, we would like to consider some parallels between the current stage of today's inflation fight with the Fed's actions in the early 80s under Chair Paul Volcker. Inflation had been persistently high by modern standards throughout the 70s. As measured by the Consumer Price Index, it was clearly a problem for consumers. Volcker was appointed to confront inflation head-on, and upon taking office in August 1979, the Federal Reserve began a robust tightening of monetary policy, bringing the federal funds rate to north of 19% by the summer of 1981. This ultimately led to the intended outcome of reduced inflation, although it also tipped the economy into a recession that lasted from July 1981 to November 1982, with unemployment rising above 10%. Now, comparisons with any historical period can be tricky. The root causes of today's inflation are unique. However, Powell sees Volcker as the primary playbook in today's fight against inflation. So it makes sense for us to consider how Volcker, widely viewed as the most hawkish central banker in U.S. history, ultimately ended his war on inflation in the early 80s. For example, it may surprise many, but Volcker first began signaling an end to the war on inflation in October 1982 even though at that point inflation was still north of 5%. However, it's important to view his actions in the context of that period. The annual rate of change, and importantly, expectations of future inflation, had come down significantly from the peak of a few years prior. Nonetheless, this is an interesting nuance. Whereas Paul Volcker's historical reputation is his willingness to impose draconian measures to combat inflation, clearly his approach was more thoughtful. He was willing to shift tactics once he saw inflation trend downward significantly enough. The market reaction in late 1982 may also provide an interesting parallel. One might think that the market hit its bottom only after Volcker signaled the inflation war to be ending, but in fact, the S&P 500 bottomed out on August 12th, nearly two months before Volcker's comments. Between August 12th and Volcker's comments on October 10th, the S&P rallied 28.8% whereas the approximate 12 months following Volcker's pivot, the index gained a price return of 27.9%. Thus, a significant portion of the rally had occurred before Volcker shifted his focus from combating inflation to supporting the economy. As I said earlier, one always has to be careful when drawing historical comparisons. One reason Volcker may have pivoted with CPI still above 5% is that the recession was severe, with unemployment above 10%. This is in stark contrast with the resilience that we're seeing in the economy and the labor market today. Another point of nuance is that even though Volcker's public comments did not signal a pivot away from inflation until October 1982, the federal funds rate had already been coming down from its 19% peak for several months, undoubtedly contributing to that stock market rally. In contrast, stocks in 2023 have been rising even as the Fed continues to hike rates. Despite these differences, I believe there are a couple of useful insights that we can apply to today from that period. First, we shouldn't necessarily assume that Chair Powell is going to keep tightening monetary policy all the way until CPI hits 2%. Just like in Volcker's time, Powell should be able to recognize when inflation's trend is sufficiently moderating so that he can signal the war is effectively over. Second, we should appreciate the difficulty in timing the stock market relative to the Fed's comments. Investors have been surprised by the strong stock market in the first half of 2023, even as the Fed is still hiking rates. Keep in mind that investors who sat on the sidelines in 1982, waiting until Volcker's pivot in October, would have missed a big chunk of that market rally that occurred in the two months that preceded his pivot. It's for this reason that we believe investors will be better off in the long run if their portfolios are invested for their risk tolerance and their cash needs, rather than their near-term expectations of the market. Thank you for joining me today. We look forward to seeing you next time.